This is Lesson 5 of 16 Lessons on How to Build a Joomla Website. This lesson demonstrates how to install Joomla using a script provided by your web host. This is a fast method of installing Joomla as the script adds the necessary files and creates a database for you. The script I demonstrate is called Softaculous, but the same principles apply with other solutions. So if your host provides this option, this is the lesson to watch. If you don't have this option, move to the next lesson, Standard Installation. These days, web hosting accounts include an online control panel where you set up your email addresses, review website statistics, create databases, and much more. There are several control panels, but the most popular is called cPanel, and that is the one that I demonstrate in this lesson. If your host provides something else, you'll still be able to follow along. When you open your web hosting account, you receive a welcome email containing instructions on how to access your control panel. For example, with cPanel, you navigate to your web address, followed by forward slash cPanel. You log in using a username and password that your host provides. And then you're presented with a screen similar to this one. Scroll down if necessary to find the One Step Installer. This host is using the Soft Aculus application, which is the best one I've found. Click this and you'll probably see Joomla listed on the first page. If not, look at the Portals slash CMS category at the left, and then Joomla. This page presents an overview and displays the version of Joomla that it will install. Click the install link at the top. Now just enter a few details and you're on your way. Firstly, you may be given an option of which version of Joomla to install. So choose the appropriate one for your circumstances. Next, choose the protocol. This means, do you want the site to work with or without the www? In other words, will you be promoting your site as www.yourdomainname.com or just yourdomainname.com? I recommend choosing the www option as this will end up working for both situations anyway. Ignore the HTTPS options. This is for security certificates and you can make this work later if necessary. Next, if you have more than one domain name allocated in your hosting account, you'll need to choose the appropriate one from this drop down box. The In Directory option specifies where the Joomla installation should reside in your hosting account. If you have a new hosting account, this is an easy decision, just leave the box empty. But if you already have a website in this account, you won't want to upset the existing files. In that case, enter a new directory name, something like Joomla. And then when your site is ready, you can move the files from that directory to your main directory. That's what I'll do in this example. The installer creates a database for you and the next field is where you can specify a name for the database. You might as well just go with the name that has already been entered. Then enter a name for the site. You would normally enter your organisation name here, but don't worry too much at this stage as it can be changed later. The description is used for search engine listings and again this can be changed later. You can leave the database settings as they are. The first option specifies a prefix that is added to the database tables and the suggested one is fine. 
For the purpose of this course, I suggest you leave the setting for import sample data as it is. The Joomla site that is installed will include some sample articles, menus and other data that is helpful while you're learning. I'll refer to the sample data throughout this course, so in order for you to follow along, it's helpful for you to include it too. It can be deleted later. When Joomla is installed, you need at least one user account that is used to access the backend administrator, which is where the content is managed. Change the default username to something that you can remember. This is of course up to you, but for best security, it's good to choose something that's hard for others to guess. You can use the default password, or click this icon to change it, or enter your own. This really is important to get right, as hackers can force their way into sites that use weak passwords. The consensus is that it's best to use at least eight characters and include numbers, uppercase and lowercase letters as well as a symbol or two. Next, you need to enter your name into the real name box as well as an email address that Joomla needs to send notification emails. You're just about ready to go, but before clicking the button, make a note of the admin username and admin password. You'll need those to access the Joomla administrator. You don't need to record the database name or site name. Complete the installation by clicking the install button. Several things then happen behind the scenes. A database is created, the Joomla files are copied to your web hosting account, and some initial configuration is done. You can now open a new browser tab, navigate to your web address, and view a standard Joomla website that contains sample data. If you opted to install Joomla inside a directory, you would need to go to that location instead. For example, if you specified that you wanted Joomla installed in a folder called Joomla, you would go to www. whatever your domain name is, forward slash Joomla. That's all that needs to be done to install Joomla, if your web host provides a quick install option. If you're still searching for a host, I recommend you have a look at the hosting resources page on our website. We sometimes create bundles with our preferred partners that include hosting and more Joomla training, so this is a fantastic way to get started with Joomla. Now, if you've been able to install Joomla using this one-step option, skip ahead to Lesson 7. Or if you don't have this option, watch the next video, as this demonstrates the standard installation steps.